So by now, most of you probably know Wes Craven died yesterday at the age of 76. I wanted to do a kind of from the heart video on this because Wes Craven's movies were some of my favorite films growing up. I kind of feel like maybe our core audience at Movieholics don't really know who Wes Craven is or what his accomplishments were. So I just wanted to take a few minutes out of my day to go over some of his accomplishments with you guys, so hopefully this will open you up to some of his movies. So let's jump right in! So, Wes Craven was born August 2nd, 1939. One of the craziest things about Wes and what he would ultimately grow up to be is he was born to a family of very strict, very devout Baptists. If you've seen even one preview of his movies, you'll understand why that's funny. And another thing, a lot of people don't know this, but he had a master's in philosophy. Philosophy for the love of God. He also got a start in the porn industry. He directed several films under several fake names and even did writing and film editing for it. But from there, he goes and he makes his first feature-length film, a movie called Last House on the Left. And of course, I'm talking about the original 1972 version, not the remake that I think he produced, if I'm not mistaken, that probably some of you have seen. Now, if you've never seen this film, and again, I'm talking about the original one, not the remake, you can probably consider yourself lucky because clearly, Wes hadn't quite got out of the porn industry mindset before making this film. That said, this is the movie that would eventually give birth to The Original Hills Have Eyes in 1977, Stranger in Our House in 78, Swamp Thing in 82. Yeah, no joke. He directed Swamp Thing. And of course, Nightmare on Elm Street in 1984. And it is here where Wes Craven's legacy begins. For me personally, I always thought of all the slashers that existed back in the day, Freddy was the scariest. Because if you think about it, if you just have two working legs, you can outrun Michael, you can outrun Leatherface, you can outrun Jason, but no matter how fast you run or how well you hide, you have got to sleep. And that's where Freddy rips your throat out. Not to mention Freddy Krueger is just a lot scarier of a name than Michael Myers or Jason Voorhees. Now, you need to understand why this movie had such an impact on me. I was only two when it came out, but when I was like four, my dad let me watch it. Whether or not you agree with his parental tactics when it came to watching movies, I loved the film. Did it scare me? Fuck yes! But that's why I loved it. I absolutely enjoyed getting the shit scared out of me. Literally, I was four. Couple that with the fact that my dad was really logical, he showed me all the behind the scenes stuff that existed on Nightmare on Elm Street, and I thought that was the coolest shit on the planet. Anyways, moving on. Wes had a slew of films that all had moderate success from 1984 to 1996. Everything from The Hills Have Eyes 2, The Twilight Zone, The People Under the Stairs, real fucked up movie by the way, Wes Craven's A New Nightmare, which is the seventh in the series. Yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street got pretty bad there for a while. And wouldn't you know, Wes didn't direct any of them except for the first one and the seventh one. Mother Cluckin' Vampire in Brooklyn. And then finally, in 1996, Wes strikes big again with a movie that would go on to birth four sequels and a TV show, Scream. So this film hit when I was like 10 years old. And I remember when I was in the fifth grade, I had this birthday party and I had a bunch of kids over. And I wanted to watch Scream on VHS, but my mom wouldn't let me because she was scared of what the other parents might say. So we literally had to wait until all the kids were gone, and then me and two of my friends who were staying over that night got to stay up late and watch it. And holy crap did I love this movie. It had suspense, it had jokes, it made fun of itself, it had a great lineup of actors. Uh, okay, let's face facts. I was 10 years old and what I was really interested in was seeing boo. And there weren't any boobs! But I still love the movie for all the reasons that I listed above, and I'm not joking. Now, some of you might laugh at me, and that's fine. But to this day, Scream is my favorite horror movie franchise that's ever existed. I just really wish they had stopped at 3. So of course, Scream being the huge financial hit that it was, got a sequel in 1997, and it became a trilogy in the year 2000. Wes wouldn't direct again until 2005 with two movies, one called Cursed and the other called Red Eye, neither of which I was a huge fan of. What? I don't have to like all his damn films, jeez. He stopped off in 2006 to do a film called Paris I Love You, which he did with like 20 directors or something. And then he would finish out his directing career in 2010 and 11 with two films, My Soul to Take and Scream 4 respectively. Of course, keep in mind, that is on top of the countless films that he both wrote and produced. He had a long, fruitful career. And I guess what I want people to know is the impact that he had on the horror genre. Not only did he have an impact, but it was a huge, positive impact. Take the movie Last House on the Left, for example. 
I don't personally like it, and I don't think it's all that great of a film. But it pushed the envelope just enough to give us Texas Chainsaw Massacre in 1974, and Halloween in 1978, and Friday the 13th in 1980. And if you wanted to go there, you could argue 100% that the Saw series and the Hostel series totally borrowed from The Last House on the Left. Furthermore, you can look it up if you want, but at the time Scream got released, the horror genre was dying. I mean, they were cranking out horror films, sure, but they were terrible, and they were doing terrible at the box office. If Wes hadn't made Scream and made it such a huge success, we might not ever have gotten some of the fan favorites that exist today, like The Blair Witch Project and Paranormal Activity and, well, I'm not gonna say this is a fan favorite, but movies like The Purge. All of these movies get made because Wes Craven revitalized the genre in 1996 with Scream, and that's just an amazing accomplishment. My point is that this man's career has inspired cinema in a very grand way. If you've ever enjoyed a horror movie ever, you probably have Wes to thank. On August 30th, 2015, we lost an amazing storyteller, and I'm just glad that he got to live in a time where we could immortalize his movies. Because no one will be able to deny when they make a horror movie, Wes Craven had a hand in it. Anyways, that's all I got, guys. If you have not watched any of this man's amazing stories, you should start with this one. Deuces.